okay y'all i'm here i'm here with another video so if you guys do not know well i'm here to review last chance you basketball i am probably gonna do an episode um episode by episode unless like i feel like one episode is kind of like boring and not much happened but until then i will be doing episode by episode i am a really 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 big fan i'm sorry hold on one second So, I'm a really, 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 really huge fan of The Last Chance You franchise or series. I have always seen it, like, go by on Netflix, but I think the very first time I actually really sat down and watched it was the last... When the, whenever the last season came out, I went back and I watched all of them. So, I watched with um, Independence, then I watched with... um. What's the next one after that? The... uh. Damn, as many times as I've watched this show and I can't even think of his damn name. But y'all know, I watched part one with the two, you know, the two seasons um, with my nigga Ollie, okay? The um, second school or whatever with my favorite person, Carlos, with his fine ass. And then I watched, um, I think Lainey was the last one that they did. So, um, yeah, so I've been a really big fan of it. I've watched the entire Last Chance You series maybe at least four or five times at this point so i'm very so one of the main reasons why i like last chance you is because i'm not a football person now mind y'all i'm in pittsburgh right so this is a football town but i personally don't care about football i am a basketball person so when i found out that they were doing last chance you basketball i got so i got so fucking excited so damn excited so i'm really really hyped I like the way that I love the trailer. Their um their little poster or whatever is sick. So let's get into the episode. Alrighty. So episode one. So I'm also for this episode only, only, and this is because we're just learning everybody. I am going to put the pictures of the people that I'm talking about next to me whenever I bring them up, but just letting y'all know. Okay. So when we start off the episode, we start off pretty much with um someone talking you know a guy talking pretty much saying how you know he just wished that things went differently if you guys don't know anything about last chance you I, I assume that you would know but if you don't know last chance you is pretty much last chance university so pretty much what it is is that people who for whatever reason you know you play a sport football basketball and um you know for whatever reason you didn't make it to a division one school or even a division two school for some people then the show is based around a school that pretty much is there to help get people to that next level that's why it's called last chance you last chance university so it's your last chance to pretty much get to where you want to be within the sport that you're doing right okay so like i said so we start off the first episode with somebody talking about pretty much how he's saying that he wished he did things differently and he just kind of want, want to take care of his kids i mean his family so um we also see a point of a guy who we'll find out later is and i'm sorry y'all i'm just getting used to names we find out later is joe okay joe um so we see joe he's playing a game or whatever they having a the game they're playing it and he gets frustrated because the refs didn't like call something that he wanted or whatever so he's telling the coach he's like take me out take me out the game take me out so the coach takes him out putting the sub and then the cameras follow him back to the locker room and he just starts throwing shit around he's pissed he's upset he got a lot going on so boom we start off all right so we meet the co well we hear the coach talking coach is it Mo coach mosley okay and you hear him say pretty much that basketball reveals like it's not really like a lot of other sports it literally reveals who you are when the pressure is on which i like the way that they put that sentence in like conjunction with you know seeing um joe kind of snap out and stuff like that and so where we are centralized this season is east la college okay oh it's okay okay <laughs> okay east la college it is the second largest community college in the united states it is thirty five thousand kids that go there which that's pretty fucking insane for community college that is huge like regular campuses like be having like thirty thousand fucking people i feel like i went to duquesne university which is out here in pittsburgh which is a pwi predominantly white institution if you know and I think they had maybe 30,000 students, like, and it felt kind of small. So, 
All right, shout out to East LA, okay? So we learned a little bit about Coach Mosley, okay, and the school itself. Um, the school itself hasn't won anything like of, of significance since 2001. Um, and this is Coach Mosley's first coaching job, okay? Um, let me see. Are we going to get into there a little bit? Uh, we'll get into him in a little bit. And so where we start off is 78 days till playoff, okay? And so we first see, you know, so the first scene we kind of get after we get a little bit of who everybody is, is, you know, you see the coach kind of talking to everybody and, you know, they on the floor and he's just like, y'all not getting the ball. One thing I do notice about Coach uh, Mosley is that he is very about, number one, being in the paint, because I counted, he said it at least 20 times throughout this first episode, like that he wants them to get in the paint. And he's very much so about, I don't want to call it bullying, like bully ball, but that's just kind of, it ain't even really bully. He just wants you to get up in the paint. And he's really, really, really big so far to me on this episode about like defense. Like y'all not getting y'all asses in the paint and really taking it to where y'all need to take it. Like y'all just bullshitting or whatever. So <laughs> there's a scene in the beginning, right? Where he's like snapping on them about blocking. And so you see this man run up to the wall. He literally like, runs up the wall and then bounces back and like smacks the wall on top i said yo coach got hops so i appreciate so far that you know a lot of times and I, i'm not, i've never been on like a sports team before so i can't speak to that i can only speak to like gym or whatever but if y'all ever notice and a lot of times when you have gym classes a lot of times your gym teacher be fat as hell and you be like bro you got your nerve to try to tell me i need to run around this damn uh gym 15 times but can you run around the gym 15 times so i appreciate that you know as we see throughout the episode that coach mosley you can tell well he did play basketball before but you can see he's still like pretty active he's pretty fit he's only 46 years old so he's not old at all um so i appreciated that fact and it was funny because after he did it one of the people one of the uh guys faces it was cracking me the hell up because I was, I was like this nigga got hop hops for real for real it was funny as hell to me so um we like i said we talk a little bit more about the coach he was the best point guard in the history of the school um you know he talks about how you know there's recently they started making it to where you know division one coaches are coming to the school to pretty much you know recruit and you know i didn't know much about recruiting until i watched last chance you so the last one with football i didn't really know much about it i didn't really understood i didn't really understand how that worked i understand like going to a division one school like for instance i went to duquesne university right so as far as the football team is concerned i think i don't know what fucking division it was i feel like it was division negative 15 but i know that our basketball team i believe was division one or division two so that's why a lot of people will want to go to that school because you know you can possibly get looked at to go to you know another school um you know that's for sports and stuff like that so they talk about how three of their students last year, three of them was able to make it to a division one school, which is really fun. That's a really good ratio. Like I know there's not a, there's a, a lot more people on a basketball team, but I do think that that's a good ratio as far as having people like move on to a division one school. I think that's actually really good. And so, um, by the end of it now, while where we're at in the story right now, they're four. They're 14 and one, but by the end of it, we get to the end of the, the episode, they're 16 and one. Um, They have won 11 games in a row, you know, and by the end of it, I believe it said that they're number four in the state, which is kind of funny because that's kind of what happened at um, Independence, which is the last chance to football, the first little E, what is it, EM, East Mississippi Community College. Um, No, 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 Independence is the other one, is the one in, um, is the one in California, but East Mississippi Community College, um, I believe that they were having the same thing too. Like they was on a run. Um, one of them two schools, I can't remember because it gets so conflated to me now. Like one of them schools, they were kind of doing like they were kind of on the same thing. Like they were on a run as far as like not losing and stuff like that. So I like that that's where we're starting. Okay, so we're gonna get so now we get introduced to I guess some of the main people that we're gonna be dealing with. So like I said, I'm gonna put the pictures right here. I'm only gonna do it this episode. After that, we just gonna have to figure it out. So. Let's start off with Deshaun Hyler, okay? Deshaun Hyler is the shooting guard, okay? And the funny thing about it is Deshaun Hyler reminds me of um, my ex. It's funny. He likes skin. He played uh, basketball. 
he's a pretty small guy like he just straight remind me of like my ex like look wise and stuff like that but i like deshaun a lot so far then we have malik Mal malik muhammad who is a center okay he seems like he is very like he's like a uh, is he one of the big men i think he's one of the, the bigger guys but he's just like real dominating on a fucking uh court like he just be bullying niggas like not in a bad way but he just be bullying niggas and i'm here for it um then we have kj allen who is a forward okay don't really know much about him yet we got joe hampton who's a power forward who will get into him a little bit more later um he is amazing he's really fucking good i went back and i looked at uh, um his highlights and stuff like that from high school that nigga is nice he's nice he's nice he's nice um so yeah so so far that's kind of who we got focused on a little bit okay so they talk about how they practice insanely like they practice six days a week and they said it multiple times throughout the episode they're like the only day they really have off is christmas so i'm like damn yeah he he gonna work y'all he, he gonna work y'all hard as fuck okay so we got 51 days now now where we're at we got 51 days until playoffs okay so now we kind of see um you know how the kids are living you know um at emc at emcc um, although it was a community college, they actually lived on campus, which when I first watched the show, I was like, oh, that's interesting because from what I know, most community colleges, you don't live on campus. You go home and then you come back. Like, that's normally how that goes. And that's how it is here as well. Um, you know, they show that them kids don't live on campus. I think three of them live together. I can't remember who the three is, but three of them live together. And the producers is like, y'all like, you know, living on y'all own and not living with y'all with y'all parents. They're like, hell yeah, mind you. They talk about how happy they are. Meanwhile, showing the fucking apartment, it's trifling, which I'm not judging because I was in college. Not, I graduated from college in two, what my undergraduate in 2016. So it's not lost on me on um how college dorms and how people who live in college period live you don't give a fuck okay you don't care um and then they also said at the end i think they said that they're sharing a one-bedroom apartment which that's not out of the realm of thinking for me because they live in la do you know how much it costs to live in la a ridiculous amount of money so that makes sense to me okay so um so yeah so then we um we meet taj who is taj i'm sorry who is i believe he is a reserve forward i believe is that what he is he's a reserve player I, I i believe that or something like that you know and they asked him about coach mosley you know he said coach mosley is he's good or whatever but he just be having his tantrums and i ain't gonna lie that man do be cracking me up when he be getting mad because it's like he don't curse or anything like that he just be going the fuck off and it's hilarious that's one of the best parts to me of last chance you is seeing these damn coaches go the fuck off because it's funny except buddy going off buddy going off is like buddy steven i didn't have time for that but everybody else who go off is funny it's funny to me it's funny okay so then we also meet ken hunter who is an assistant coach i'm just dropping off some names because we got to get to know the characters y'all we got to get to know the characters okay so um malik again we're talking about coach mosley in a way that he coaches you know Malik says, you know, he's really cool, but again, you have no type of days off at all. And so there's a point um, when they're talking to Malik, you know, where I forgot what it was that Malik did or didn't do. It was something about the way the ball was being passed to him and how he was like, well, he didn't pass the ball good enough. And Coach Wilson made a good point. He was like, so what are you supposed to do, pass the ball perfect to you? Like, there, he's like, yeah, he could have passed it better. I mean, yeah, but at the end of the day, like, that's not going to always happen. You as a player need to adjust to how to get the ball because it's not always going to be a perfect throw it's not always you're not always going to be set up in a position where you can get the ball in a clean way it don't work like that which i'm like talk talk that shit talk that shit and so malik is like well it's not my fault and then he's like coach Mosley was like okay so it's everybody else's fault that, that's what you're saying he's like yeah it ain't my fault he said bet hit the line i said oh they about to do suicides i already know so as soon as a coach said now like 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 i said i don't play sports but I've watched enough 30 for 30 ESPN documents. I've watched enough of those to get the basics of what the hell is going on here. I said, ooh, he about to make them do suicides and they about to be mad. And they was all pissed as hell. And he said, all of y'all except Malik do a fucking, do, them, do, these, do these suicides because apparently it's y'all fault. Which I like that type of, um that approach because it's like, all right, you want it to be everybody else's fault? Let's see how that works out for you. Not great, does it? Okay. So I did think that that was, I, I thought that that was good, okay? So 
um, we talk a little bit more about, um, you know, Coach Mosley and how, you know, he's like, I get all of these kids because, like, I see them in me. You know, like, I'm from South Central. Um, you know, he talks to us a little bit later about his background. You know, how he ended up being in a gang. But then, um, I think he said, like, a drive-by shooting had happened, like, with him and his friends when he was there. And his friends was like, we about to ride out and go get these niggas. And he was like, Mm, I don't really know about that. Like that that's not me. He said that's when shit really hit real life. This is not me. He said he seen a poster for um basketball tryouts. He went and you know, that's that's history pretty much, you know. He just kind of went into a different um, you know, realm. So then we see um Ruby Getta. That is her name. She is the coach's assistant. And we also see Rob Robinson, he's the assistant coach. Now they're in a room with Malik, okay? And Malik says that his biggest problem is procrastinate. And I said, Malik, I'm here. We're here. We're here. I am one of the biggest procrastinators of all time. It is so, it frustrates me how much I procrastinate. I literally wait till the last minute to do everything. Like I just finished getting my NBA, right? Like maybe a month or two ago. And do you know that I have learned nothing from being an undergrad to being an MBA to get my MBA in the sense of doing the work like I always will wait to the last well first of all I do work so let's take that into consideration but I'm not gonna lie I do be waiting till the very last minute like almost all my papers always got turned in at 11 59 that's why that little TikTok where uh where the girl is like and it's like 11 58 59 and then you hear 11 59 and they go like that's me that's me i understand i i get it i get it don't know why i'm a procrastinator but i feel him on that and so you know they talk about you know how he really is a procrastinator and they talk about you know like practice starts at 2 30 this man will come at exactly 2 29 on the dot i'm like yep that's me he's like but when he do get there he works hard and that's why i said i feel like i really relate to him because that's how i am too i might come at the last minute but when i do come i'm about to give my all so that's what they do appreciate about him you know he's really really good as far as what they say he's good at blocking rebounding and dunks and i really see that he's really really good at like blocking and like defense top notch he's really fucking good okay um and they say you know what makes him special is that he's six nine, but he's like a all around player. It's not like oh, he's just a six nine guy and he's a big man and could just kind of stand in the post or whatever. Like no, he's a full fledged all around player. They was like he can beat a point guard to the end of the fucking uh court. Like he lit and they show this nigga really can do that. Like so he's 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 really fucking good. So then we have forty nine days left to playoff star, okay? And then we get more into Deshaun, okay? So we see Deshaun. He this is after practice. He's in one of the classrooms, and you know he's saying how he normally waits because of traffic. Which for the people who live in LA and drive, I don't know how y'all be dealing with. Hold on, y'all, one second. Okay, sorry about that. Yes, yeah, so, um, okay, yes, yeah, so like I said, we get to Deshaun, and yeah, so what I was saying about the traffic is, God bless y'all heart, because I know LA traffic is like, it's a whole nother fucking beast. I be complaining about the parkway. I couldn't deal. So anyway, so um, then, you know, the coach comes in and talks to him, and we come to find out that uh, Deshaun, is that his name? Deshaun, he lost both of his parents. He lost his father, I think, a long time ago, and then his mom just recently, not that long ago, died from cancer and stuff. And so, um, you know, we talk about how he is the team captain, which you can kind of tell before they even say it. You could tell he got, like, a real, like, commanding, very, like, leadership type of, like, aura around him. And, you know, he said he's been playing since he was two years old. His favorite player is AI. You and everybody else, sir. You know, I wish that, and I'm surprised because he's kind of young, right? So when AI would have been, like, in his prime, like, he would have still, still been really, really young. But I guess he's a basketball player, so, of course, you're going to pay attention. But I really wish that people, like, kids like of today like who are teenagers and stuff like that they really understand the impact of Allen Iverson it is it is felt to till this day it is felt to this day I mean from just his sweat it's specifically his swag kind of like um Deshaun was talking about like his just I don't give a fuck attitude 
Allen Iverson is the reason people got to dress up in suits and shit when they come to the damn game because they was pissed off about him and how he dressed and his love of hip hop and how he influenced that. He just really influenced the whole generation. Shout out to AI. What an icon. What an icon, okay? So, um, you know, uh, Coach mostly tells us, you know how he's cool, but he's a little stubborn and he can be a little mean. And, you know, that's how Deshaun kind of said that other people described him, but he felt like that's not how he is. Um, I love the part where he said, um, what the, Deshaun said, I don't think I'm any of those things. I just think I'm going through the hardest part of my life. And I feel like that was so honest of him. Like he's being real right now. Like he doesn't have any type of parents. He don't got his mama or his daddy. And he's a young black man out in these streets. I don't care if he likes it or not. The young black man living in LA, like the coach said, with no type of guidance. And he's just trying to find his way and I do think that this probably is the hardest part of his life probably will always be the hardest part of his life but I do appreciate that um you know coach Mosley said that before his mom before Deshaun's mom passed away you know his mom told coach Mosley like I'm giving you my child like for real and he said I told him ever since that day you mind that he is and I believe it it seems like they have a decent relationship just off of the first episode so Sorry, y'all. So then we go and we talk a little bit about the workload a little bit. We go and we see the kids, you know, like doing like their work and stuff like that, you know, their actual schoolwork. And, you know, how one of the coaches is like, you know, you got some kids who can knock it out, but you got some other kids who you got to kind of sit with, which that's normally just how it works with any type of, you know, a group of kids in general. You got some that's going to catch on more than the other. The goal is to not give up on any of them honestly you know not to overlook the people who are doing really good and to not underserve the people who need help you know what i mean you got to kind of find a, a good balance um and also specifically not making people feel bad about knowing certain things you know like i probably know a whole lot of shit that a whole lot of people don't but i don't look down on them up you know because of that you know it's just when it comes to education i just kind of I've always been the type of person to catch on really, really fast, except except for math. Math kicks my ass. But outside of that, I've always been the type to kind of catch on really fast. But not everybody is like that. For instance, like when I was in school, I almost always got straight A's, maybe a couple B's here and there. But I never in my life, I think I got a C one time and that was in ninth grade and that was for a math class. But outside of that, I've never got below an A, a B or a C. However, my younger siblings they struggle a little bit more in school. It's not that they're not smart or anything, but it just doesn't come as easy to them as it does for me. And I think that's okay. So then we go over to, um, we talk about, who you talking about now? Um, KJ. Okay, we got KJ. KJ, um, he won the city in the city championship, and he was also pretty much ranked as like one of the best players in LA when he was in high school. But the problem with him is that he had a GPA of 2.2 when he was in high school, so he didn't get to make it and go on to a bigger school. You know, I feel like when it comes to GPAs, and mind you, this is somebody speaking as when I was in high school, I had a GPA, I think, of 3.5. When I went to undergrad, I left with a GPA of 2.7. When I left my MB, when I left my, uh, my graduate school just now, I left with a 3.8. So I feel like when it comes to GPAs, they are not always a good representation of what you do in school. Like, I, I've always felt like that because I personally feel like what a GPA can't, encompass is everything else that goes on around you and as far as your effort you know what I mean like for instance when I was an undergrad the when I like when I applied for my grad school I had to put my GPA in context it's not that I was making excuses but what they have to understand is that when I was an undergrad I worked full-time I was going to school full-time and I worked full-time so I went to school from uh, eight, especially when I was a freshman, I had to get up dumb early. So I went to school for maybe like, let's say eight to two. And then from three to 11, I worked at a grocery store and that was all four years of college. So I feel like a GPA, it, I mean, it is a good measure, but I feel like it's not cause it doesn't really give you a full encompass of everything that was going on, you know, with someone. So then we get on to, so then we also meet Marquise, who is a reserve forward as well. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get through this as much as fast as I can. So we got 47 days, okay? And we got a, we had a fun little part of Tej pretty much being like, you know, he could uh, 
you know, make a shot on the coach or whatever. And the coach was like, man, I'm 46 years old. Like, I will block you down. I've seen a thousand and ten of you. So they do this little fun thing. He pretty much blocked them off. He he had you. He had you, Tej. I'm sorry, but he had you. He had you, okay? But then you got Joe was like, man, I can make this half-court shot. It ain't shit. And if I make this half-court shot, like, you got to do right. He's like, you ain't going to make it. What happened? He made it. And I'm going to touch on that in a brief second if I have the time, okay? Then we go to Joe Hampton and we learn about Joe Hampton, which was the person who was speaking in the beginning about him, you know, being a little bit upset about, you know, the situation that he's in and how he wish he could take care of his family. So he was the 21st top recruit from high school. It was on ESPN, ESPN and everything. But he just had a, like a series of bad, unfortunate events. The man tore his ACL, which like, that's why one of the coaches is like, it's amazing he's even still able to play. It really is. This man tore his ACL and he didn't get to play his last year of school. Then he went to Penn State and he tore his meniscus and his LCL. My God, like, you yes it's thankful that you can even play to this day okay and so he said once all of that happened he couldn't play anymore you know he was smoking all heavy he got up to 300 pounds and he was just really 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 depressed and he ended up reaching out to coach mosley and coach mosley let him come back you know but he's kind of trying to get into the rhythm of things because he hasn't played in two full years okay so we get to game day and it's them versus and sorry they're called the huskies the huskies versus rio hondo okay now the first um quarter they were sloppy as hell and i got his name that was his name howen number 33 was killing them specifically behind the arc and i also want to point out that what i've noticed okay so i do know that from watching basketball you know and stuff like that that the game shout out to steph curry is being revolutionized by people being more so like being from behind the arc instead of like being in the paint more you got way more people whose range is just crazy so even when it comes to joe and him hitting from half court like that's gonna be the standard like give it give it not that long this standard is gonna be a half court fucking shot that's why i do agree that i think eventually the nba should implement a four point line because the the shots that these people are making are ridiculous and the fact that these in the whole they made 10 fucking threes i'm like bruh these kids is really shooting from behind the damn bleachers and making it it was amazing to me okay so like i said so howen number 33 on real honda he was killing he was killing him killing him okay so then he ends up throwing joe in uh, and you know Joe comes in off the top and he makes a lot good couple plays couple baskets um I believe Joe when he was like I'm not a basketball player I'm a hooper I believe that um so then you know they go back into the you know locker room because they're losing at this point or they're like losing their steam because Rio Hondo is a terrible team I think they've only won three games in total and these they're like supposed to be like the number two seed so y'all supposed to win regardless so i like the fact that when coach uh, mosley were back there he wasn't yelling at them he was just like man this is up to y'all and i think that the approach that he used in this situation was really good which is like it was more of a disappointment thing like this is on y'all like if y'all don't want it y'all don't want it and so that pretty much gave them the ability to turn up and sean when he came out was on 33's ass he told him he was like you're not getting no more and he was on his ass the rest of the night and you know the defense ended up being on point um muhammad is nice malik, is, isn't malik muhammad right malik i think it's malik muhammad he's nice he's super nice super nice okay and by the end of the game, they ended it. They crushed their ass. It was 107 to 79. I said, y'all better come the fuck through. Y'all better come the fuck through. So, yeah, so y'all get in the comments. Y'all tell me what y'all think. I'm really liking Deshaun so far. And I also like Malik so far. I like both of them. But I also like Joe. Joe seems cool, too. But I'll be back with episode two later. Bye-bye.